Welcome back. Today we're going to explore the Dragon Shrine. We're very close to the end of the game now. This is actually the final area that is on the list of bonfire warp points. So any further exploration that we do, we'll have to be backtracking. As befitting of a final dungeon, I suppose you might call it, it's quite difficult. It's a gauntlet. There's not much exploration to be done here. It's mostly just fighting. And your opponents are the Drake Keepers. The Drake Keepers are probably the toughest enemies in the game. They behave an awful lot like the old soldiers in Hades Tower of Flame. If those guys got a huge buff to damage, endurance, and general efficacy. Behind this Pharaoh's Lockstone door is the Judgment Set and the Staff of Wisdom, which don't really go together, but they need to stick it somewhere, I guess. The Staff of Wisdom requires a whopping 50 intelligence to wield, but it has the highest intelligence scaling in the game for a sorcery catalyst. So if you're going far down that tree, then it's something you want to pick up. Regrettably, it's not something you can pick up early, because you always come here at the end of the game. There's no way to come here before then. Now, the Drake Keepers come in several varieties. The Sword and Shield variety is not too difficult, but the guys that two-hand these enormous maces are awful. I am honestly convinced that they are not programmed correctly. It is entirely possible to get them into an attacking loop where you simply do not have an opportunity to safely counterattack. They have very low recovery times on some of their hits, especially when they start whacking at you with overhead swings. That can go on forever. Well, maybe not forever, but for quite a while. No other enemy in the game gives me quite so much trouble as them. I'm not sure if it's a personal failing or if they really are bugged or what. Given some of the weird decisions in this area, I am not above assuming that they might be slightly programmed incorrectly. Speaking of programmed incorrectly, this recording was a little bit cursed. I had multiple computer hiccups and just a generally awful time of it when I was doing this, so I had to cut a little bit out there because there was a lot of Windows noises making me making angry things at me, and I, I had to attend to some stuff off screen, and it just, just, just pretend I picked up that twinkling titanite, and it was fine. Oops. That's another failure I can chalk up to being used to Bloodborne's control scheme. Which actually, I should mention, is inferior to this one in the fact that you have to double tap the run button to do a dash jump instead of pressing down on the stick, which is much better in basically every way. Once I remembered which game I was playing, I had no further difficulties jumping. I see you up there. You will not actually find a Drake Keeper wielding a Great Axe in this area, or anywhere for that matter. I guess that's why they put the War Axe in the chest. However, you can get all of the other weapons from killing these guys and getting their drops. This is probably the single toughest encounter in the game for me personally. These two guys together are nightmarish to deal with. I switched to the Ice Rape here just so I had a little bit more leeway with dodging, so I didn't have to commit so much to each attack. Unfortunately, he sort of got me in the corner, and 
getting put in a corner by something so large is difficult to handle. These guys also have a really obnoxious stagger on a lot of their attacks that most enemies don't have. Meaning that if you get hit by one swing of the combo, you're probably getting hit by all of them. After a quite frankly embarrassing number of deaths and attempts and retries, I finally managed to clear this platform out and we continue on exploring. I'm really good at video games. Over here is a quasi-secret area. I wouldn't really... It's sort of obvious, but you might miss it. The final mimic in the game is also down here. Since we're out of the dark set to collect, we get instead a petrified dragon bone and the unique katana, the washing pole. The washing pole is interesting. It's a katana, except it's extremely long. It has low durability, which is actually a thing in this game, so I've never really used it. But it does have immense reach. This variety of Drake Keeper is, I would say, in between the sword and shield and the great hammer ones. These guys use war picks and a great shield. They do not tend to get into those super stunlock combos very often, but they can, especially if they shield bash you, which is difficult to avoid. Mostly because it doesn't have much of a wind up, because they always have their shields up. They just sort of shove it at you and you're stunned forever. Well, not, not forever. It's worth coming down here for this alone. The third dragon ring is the strongest dragon ring and gives the most benefits to health, stamina, and equipment load. It's a fairly standard ring for pretty much every character to equip, which is honestly sort of indicative of bad design. I think it's sort of stupid that there is one ring that literally every character ever will want to have on at all times. Especially when there's so many questionably useful rings in the game. Dragonfang Villard is an NPC invasion, probably the last one in the game that you will fight, unless you do DLCs after this. And he's nothing really to write home about. He will sometimes drop his Black Dragon Greatsword, very rarely, but he doesn't respawn, so if you really want that, then Honestly, there's a better way to get it anyway. Don't even bother farming. Really, don't. Don't do it. That would be so sad. So many aesthetics for nothing. The petrified dragon egg is something that does not have any readily apparent use. But we will see what it does at the end of this update. The watch dragon parma as well as the newly acquired crystal magic weapon are both useful in their own right if you have the intelligence to use the crystal. Crystal magic weapon is the strongest variation of enchant weapon, at least for sorcery damage. And it makes your weapon all cool and spiky if you're into that. Now, this Dark Spirit is not, in fact, a scripted NPC invader. This guy is just a butthole. <laughs> he invaded me earlier when I was having so much trouble and I was just like, Ugh! So he gets me here again, but this time I am far more prepared to deal with him. Now, of course, I'm still at a disadvantage here because he has a whole bunch of Drake Keepers backing him up so it's best to retreat. With my ice rapier, I'm actually in a better position in this narrow corridor. That said, he's not a pushover. I do like to avoid it, 
if I can, healing during PvP battles. But at this point, he is simply an obstacle to my progression, and I am sick to death of this area. So he runs off and leaves us to play with the final variety of Drake Keepers, the ones wielding great swords. They're probably the easiest. Their attacks are easy to dodge. They're quite slow. They have a lot of wind-up, and they don't seem to have the almost perpetual motion that the two-handing mace keepers have. Of course, he's probably healed up with some sort of miracle, so now we have to deal with him again. be using the washing pole. I feel like that was a mistake that saved my life. He probably did not need to reapply fire to his weapon. Unfortunately, once you've seen one PvP fight in this game, you've sort of seen them all. He was probably pretty salty after that, but I don't care. Alright, back to the grind. These guys are actually made quite a bit easier by the fact that you fight them on an incline. That's not the case for most enemies, but they tend to suffer from the same issues that you do, in that if you're below them, they will have a hard time actually hitting you. You do not have this problem because they're enormous. Along with their equipment, the Drake Keepers like to drop Dragon Charms, which are powerful healing items. And I think by the end of this run I had over 20 of them. Breaking up the Drake Keeper monotony are these two guys. I'm not really sure what I would call them. They appear to simply be like dragon soldiers, I guess. Wearing unique equipment and using unique weapons. They behave like other player characters, so they're a little bit difficult. Mostly because they have so much health. Like, literally everything here. Fortunately, since they are human sized, you can backstab them for a lot of damage, and it is not too difficult to do. They will occasionally drop their weapons, as well as the occasional dragon scale. That was interesting going to back off real quick. Dying here would really suck. For instance, he drops the Black Dragon Great Axe. The Black Dragon weapons are sort of interesting because they have no scaling to them whatsoever. Black Dragon lost its tail in a magnificent battle, and legendary weapons were forged from it. This is most likely a reference to Calamite, the Black Dragon, the bringer of Calamity, who the Chosen Undead fought in the past. 
well, actually, I suppose that's all in the past in our perspective, so it's more like the the past past. Either way, it's a reference it's a reference to the Artorius of the Abyss DLC. That attack is nasty, by the way. It's difficult to see coming. This trio of enemies are our final obstacle between us and our destination. Whatever that is. Simply backing off down the stairs is probably the best way to deal with this entourage. The dragon soldier tends to get ahead of himself. And perhaps more importantly, ahead of his allies. When it comes down to it, if an enemy simply puts up their shield and won't bring it down, attacking through it is not always a bad idea. Gotta win through the chip damage. That is also another really, really dangerous attack, because if he is so inclined, he can follow it up immediately with a more powerful swipe. And you won't be able to do anything because shield bashes tend to stun you. Every kind of Drake Keeper is dangerous, but the hierarchy goes two handed mace, war pit great shield, sword and shield, and great sword. Believe me, I'm a Drake Keeper expert. I have done research. Oh, hey there, buddy. I guess this is the drake they were keeping. Well, that was a whole load of nonsense. The ancient dragon gives us the ash and mist heart and then promptly shuts up forever. What we were supposed to do with this artifact is not readily apparent. However, before we investigate, there is something else I want to do regarding another mysterious thing that we picked up here. For reasons that are largely beyond my reckoning, we must deliver the petrified dragon egg to Megarold. The only possible hint that you would have to do this is that when you first talk to him, he will mention that he would have liked to visit the dragon shrine and quote unquote comb it for goodies. Now, of all the things that we found there, I would put a giant lump of petrified egg to be fairly low on the totem pole, but apparently Magarold is intensely interested in it, so we need to go visit him. And as is customary, when we visit Magarold, we need to clear out the area a little bit first so we don't get ambushed while we're talking to him.
literally no use for this thing. I'm very kind of you. This thing is amazing. C could it be a dragon egg? I feel invigorated just by holding it. You're quite unusual. And just like that, we can now enter the final covenant of the game, the Dragon Remnants. There's no more dialogue on this subject from Magarold. He just gives you some shit and is like, Well, unusual tastes! We can offer dragon scales to him, which will increase our rank, gradually. And I will go over how to gain more of those, aside from farming dragon soldiers, next time. While we're here, I'm going to buy the rest of Rain's set, because it looks cool. And I guess we'll be on our way now. That ancient dragon was a real weirdo. He didn't even talk so much as make weird noises that turned into words on the screen. Some form of telepathy, maybe. The mysteries deepen, but we must press forward. Until then!